not going to do probably to start the discussion and after we'll do the conclusion uh, um, it will be probably more interesting rather than a didactic and academic conclusion but i will do that after uh, do you have any question about slt first uh, on um, do you have an, an experience with this practice don't worry about asking any questions so one question who are we doing slt is really through raise your hand some few so it's very interesting because um, and who uh, uh, send the SLT to a colleague to do the SLT? If you feel so. So um, second question: Are you convinced by the fact that we probably should do SLT earlier in the in the step in the glaucoma treatment or not? More or less. So um, any questions about SLT? Side effects? Well, I've got a, a question to you, sort or, or just uh, what did you think about perhaps. If you look at the AGES trial, yes, where they compared patients who'd had trabecular plasty, argon laser trabecular plasty, um, and primary trabeculectomy, they found that patients who'd had trabecular plasty in the first instance had a higher incidence of failure of trabeculectomy and have poorer um, visual outcomes. Do you think we're going to see the same thing with SLT? Very, very good question, because as I explained to you, uh, I think that there is also another one study showing that if you do ALT before a glaucoma surgery, a filtering surgery, it's, as you said, uh, more failure. But if the ILT has been done, it's six months before the glaucoma surgery. And now that's why I have a tendency to treat, as I show you rapidly, uh, almost 250 degrees. So I do what I do, a big smile, so I treat 10, 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And to avoid the superior quadrants when I'm going to supposed to do a, a filtering surgery but it was done with LT with the holes I show you the question is does with SLT with lower fluence we would have the same risk factor for failure if we have done a laser treatment before in my experience no because I I leave one quadrant free when uh, I do my SLT, so I avoid to treat 360 degrees. I mean, I've always been interested by people who say they leave the quadrant free because if you make a trabeculectomy, that you are making a new drainage channel, and it's not—it's irrespective of yes. what's happened in the trabecular meshwork. So, leaving a quadrant tree should make no difference whatsoever. No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's nice or ever. It's just my mind, but it's not proven by any RCT or any any trials. It's just empiric. So, it's I. You're you're right. It was very good. Uh, um, uh, rather than a question, is more a comment. Uh, um, and this uh, about the fact that uh, I believe that SLT gives uh, its best in the earlier stages of glaucoma. You're I right. mean, you you would not expect so much if you use it just you know in very refractory glaucoma yes, cells right. that are the serving surgery. So we are aiming really at using. Or, or as a first-line treatment, or at the very early stages yes. of the disease. You're absolutely right. The earlier, the better. We have done one study in my department showing that if you try a CLT after too many drops, you have more risk factor for failure. And to discuss with uh, Mark Latina, who has done the study of SLT, he also proposed to do SLT before any prostaglandin analog treatments claiming that the fact of treating the patient with prostaglandin analogs could decrease the um, efficacy of SLT. So the question would be, and it's a very interesting question, does SLT on virgin eye has much more better efficacy than after? But you're absolutely right, the fact that I try everything and I'm going to try SLT, <laughs> 
It's not the rule at all. No. Because there is um, uh, an effect on drops on trabecular network, and this effect could decrease the SLT efficacy. So you're absolutely right. I, I totally agree. Uh, and, and I think that uh, partly could be the effect of the drops on the trabecular measure, but part is uh, a, a kind of a, a permanent remodeling and stiffening of the trabecular measure due to aging and due to the pathology, yes. to glaucoma, that makes the trabecular measure itself less responsive to any treatment that is aimed at re-establishing its functioning. It's, uh, it's You're right. Absolutely agree. Another uh, interesting point that you, uh, I mean, highlighted is the importance of speaking of uh, uh, speaking with the patients, explaining what we are doing because we are not curing glaucoma, and it happened also to me. Yes. It happened also to me the same. That patients believe that they are cured because the pressure okay, they are not using drops anymore, and you just don't see them anymore, yes. and this is very dangerous. So. Uh, it is something that uh, is not like a uh, yak cups, but uh, this is something that should Already. be explained to the patient. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're right. Uh, I have a question to you. Uh, we all know we are convinced that we can repeat SLT. And uh, what, in your opinion, what was the time we, we have to repeat it when uh, when we want to do it again? What was the period of what the gap? Uh, personally, I uh, have done a lot of retreatment after a first SLT. Usually I wait a couple of weeks or months before treating again, but if I have uh, two failure, I do not do any extra SLT and I switch for a glaucoma surgery or another options. Um, so it's a I, I can uh, say that in cases where I have no response, I don't retreat because yes. I don't. I, I deem that to be a treatment failure. I will retreat usually at about six to eight weeks yes. if I've had a reasonably good response, um, and especially if there's asymmetry between the eyes, I might treat an, an eye that has a less of a, a response. Uh, and again, I agree. My effect: retreat, no effect, no retreatment. <laughs> right. Okay, so a short conclusion. So now, how to rank laser and glaucoma treatments? As you know, when you treat glaucoma, you need to choose. And you see, this is what the patient is seeing when you see glaucoma. It's not saying whole or backwards. It's not saying this. You don't try. So, when do you decide laser? For every patient, you should decide on 10 factors, and they are listed here. So you should decide on family history, general disease, life expectancy, IOP correlated with corneal fitness, gonioscopy, optic nerve and size and visual and um, OCT, visual fill and progression rate. And then you decide and not to decide too late. This is the most important. We have a huge number of uh, technique and surgical technique. And the two technique we discuss here is uh, drainage technique is SLT and tie out the subcyclone. So as you know, you have a lot of uh, technique as we explained to you and we just focus on SLT and cyclodiode laser. So as we explained to you today, now we have a tendency to use the laser earlier in our uh, steps and before having this awful conch because if you uh, do a surgery in this type of conch, you have a high risk factor for failure. So as we said, first, if you wait too much, the SLT will be less uh, efficient and the surgery will be less efficient too. So you waste too many time. And now we have a tendency to first, if you treat, avoid preservative and to propose SLT as first line therapy. And if you want to consider the first line and the first choice treatment, this is also an AGS picture. You should take into account a lot of different uh, clinical safety, adherence, quality of life, cost, and target pressure. And not wait, 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 wait until the uh, loss of vision. And for cyclo, as we explained to you, we before we restricted the cyclo diet only to refractory glaucoma because of this huge number of side effects with an uh, important rate of uveitis, for instance. But uh, in the past, 
as we explained to you, we now to have a tendency to propose cyclodiode in good vision, but it also has been proposed a couple of years ago, even so with the old laser treatments, I mean the thermocyclone. And now uh, we have a tendency to propose earlier. Uh, these also are results for our groups, uh, just published also in, in Journal of Glaucoma with very good results with uh, 25% as we said, and I think that we have less UVitis with 25% rather than 21.3. That's why if you have a risk of UVitis in the of risk of inflammation, the best would be first to use as first line therapy the 25 rather than 31. And then you have good results and no significant complication. And uh, it's also interesting to a guide the treatment with uh, uh, UBM during the procedure to increase the risk, uh, to increase the um, success. So in summary now with the subcyclone, it's a safety, few complications, no tissue damage, low rate of vision loss of the time, a good efficacy uh, proven by a lot of clinical and practical experience, and it's fast and easy, and it's possible to repeat the treatment without complication. So in conclusion, how to run laser and glaucoma management? You need to change point your paradigm and to use laser procedure as an earlier treatment for glaucoma. Earlier for the SLT, earlier for the subcyclone. So um, thank you, and if you have any other questions, we are very pleased to answer to your question and thank you for your coming.